Nuclear phyllic addition is something that we need to look at now because this is how uh, carbonyl compounds tend to react. Let's start by looking at a carbonyl compound. So here's my carbonyl compound. I have the C to double bond O um, and we have a delta plus at this end and a delta minus at this end. That's because the electronegativity of the oxygen draws the electron density in this pi bond across towards the oxygen, leaving a delta plus here. Now wherever we have a delta plus we can have a reaction with a nucleophile and if you remember nucleophilic substitution um, we achieved that previously with a with a chlorine atom bonded to a carbon atom with a single bond but now we have a double bond things are going to be slightly different. We First of all our nucleophile is going to have a negative charge of some description or at least a lone pair and so if we have a lone pair um, or if we have a negative charge our arrow has to come from either the centre of the lone pair or from the negative charge. This pair of electrons is going to form a new bond between the nucleophile and that delta plus carbon atom. The, the electrons in the nucleophile are attracted by the electron deficient center on the carbon. This will form a new bond between the nucleophile and the carbon atom, but carbon cannot have five bonds, so we're going to have to break one of the existing bonds. And because the uh, CO bond here is a double bond, we're going to have the oxygen gaining the electrons in this bond. And that leaves us with the nucleophile now attached to the carbon atom, it's lost its negative charge because it's donated its electrons to the carbon. We're going to have our, our organic groups above and below from where they were before. One of these could be a hydrogen if it was an aldehyde. It doesn't matter. It doesn't affect the mechanism. Um, and then we have this single bonded oxygen now. And because it's gained the electrons from this bond, we, that is where our negative charge is going to be. We've conserved all the atoms, we've conserved that negative charge overall. The next step is to put something else on here um, to make it into a full functional group rather than just having an ionic charge. So uh, the most obvious candidate for that is a single proton. In this case, we have a lone pair of uh, electrons on the oxygen or the negative charge from either we will go and attract a proton which might have been formed from an acid. This forms a new bond. We end up with the nucleophile on here. We end up with our organic groups where they were and now we end up with an OH group. Now it's not just um, a proton here that would work. We could actually do this with water as well. We could in fact put an H2O molecule on there. Now water um, obviously has a dipole, it's a polar solvent. We know that polar solvents have dipoles and we have a delta plus on the hydrogen atom, we have a delta minus on the oxygen atom and therefore if we have uh, water as a solvent here we can have the lone pair of electrons attacking one of the protons on the water molecule which will push the electrons onto the oxygen and that will produce an OH- hydroxide ion um, as a side product. We're going to look at the specific example now and we're going to look at propanol reacting with a hydride ion. A hydride ion is produced with um, uh, a various types of reducing agent but the one that you need to know about is uh, sodium borohydride and that has um, the ability to attack this carbon atom in the carbonyl group because the carbonyl has a delta plus and a delta minus to go with it and the effect of that attack is that we're going to knock these electrons in this bond onto the oxygen that will give us O minus group on here, the hydrogen is going to go on there because I'm doing a skeletal formula. Um, I don't actually have to mark that on. Um, but we're going to end up with this O minus here. In this specific example, we're going to need something uh, here 
to react with the O- to make it into a whole neutral molecule again. And with this specific example, um, it's water that we're going to use to donate our proton. Um, and the reason that water's going to work, of course, is that we've got a dipole here, delta plus, delta minus. The lone pair on the oxygen with the negative charge is going to attack this hydrogen here. It's going to donate over um, onto the oxygen and then we're going to break this bond here back onto the oxygen. That's going to produce our alcohol and so what we've done here is we've basically taken the opposite of what you learnt in AS. We took in AS a primary alcohol, we distilled it with an oxidizing agent and we ended up with an aldehyde. Uh, now we're taking aldehyde, we're using a reducing agent to go the reverse direction. And what becomes the water molecule? Well the water molecule is left as an OH minus a hydroxide ion. Second example is to take um, a ketone or an aldehyde again uh, which might be something like propadone uh, and we're going to react it with a cyanide ion. Now this is usually sodium cyanide. Um, you can use hydrogen cyanide but it's incredibly toxic and um, quite dangerous to use. Um, smells of almonds. So if you smell almonds in a lab, run. Um, incidentally the other chemical that smells of almonds is benzaldehyde. Um, so in that case you don't have to run. Um, anyway, the uh, CN minus is going to join us, is going to join on um, with the lone pair on the carbon atom. Okay, that's important because one of the functions of this particular particular reaction is to uh, in increase um, a carbon chain. Um, if you use this with an aldehyde with two carbons you'll end up with a compound with three carbons in a chain. Here I'm going to add it onto the middle to make a branch and that's useful sometimes too. So we're going to take our cyanide iron, um, the carbon with the lone pair is going onto here. Why is it going onto there? Because we have a delta plus and then this is going to push up towards the delta minus. Don't forget to show you dipoles. I almost did. The uh, second step then is if we go to uh, intermediate, intermediate is going to have a CN group there. Importantly the bond is going to the C and we're going to have an O minus here. Usually what you do is you'd add um, sulfuric acids to this and so you're going to have H plus here this time O minus with a lone pair going to the H plus is going to form our final compound which looks like that this can be called a cyanohydrin or if you want it can be called a hydroxy nitrile okay so that's a uh, uh, two names that you might be um, f uh, might need to be familiar with cyanohydrin and hydroxy nitrile